Um, I think that it's time to make the change. Did you see Jack's question about Arcia? I did. I wanted to, and I know you and I both have talked about Arcia. And Jack, thanks for being patient with us. Chappie and I, we get excited and get into it. <laughs> I do have the chat room up. And so Jack Lissale's at 932 on my computer. So that means about a minute ago. So we're not too far off. Um, Arcia. I'll let you, you want me to go first or you? It's up to you. So you go if you want. Um, go ahead. I, I like Arcia. I, I really do. Um, I think he's underperformed. Okay. I think he's a little better than Jose Peraza. If I had to choose between the two, I'd take Arcia. I love him in that ballpark. And and the one thing I think you cannot underestimate is ballpark factors. And no matter who they are, they play 81 games in Miller Park. And if you don't think that's important, just look at Christian Yelich's splits home and away. And so I, he's a young kid, and as we're talking about Jack being patient with pitchers like Mitch Keller, I'm a little more patient with hitters like R.C. And I'll tell you a comparison I'd like to make, Chappie, and, and disagree with me or agree with me, but let's talk about it. But compare R.C. to last year's Cattell Marte. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> um, I, I, it's, that's an interesting comp. Um, I, I, I've been on Marte for a little while, so I've kind of known about Kettle Marte um, for a couple years. I mean, I, and I've known that he was young and super talented. Um, I think the numbers are comparable, though. Um, you know, I'm sitting here looking at it. It, it, you know, it looks like he's between been between 270 and 240 most of the year. Um, it, he, he's he's capable of giving you, you know, I, I think I think Marte probably has a little bit more speed. Um, I think Garcia potentially has the type of power that Marte's showing right now. Um, I think that the batting average is, you know, I think both of them you're probably looking. I think it's a fair comp, Arnie. Okay. I think it's, it's it's interesting, right? Because, like you said, I mean, doing doing the math and doing the your home games at Miller Park and that offense and the expectation that you know there's a lot more expectation being put on Kettle Martin than there is um, Orlando Garcia, which is a good thing, right? You might not get the RBIs, but you know what? If you get on, that lineup's going to turn over, and then you're going to be sitting there scoring some runs. So I do like. I do like um, Marte, or, or excuse me, Garcia. I do think that he has um, probably got a little bit more in him than what he's shown so far. I don't think, you know, I think 25 homers, you know, another 15 homers the rest of the year um, is feasible. Um, I think that, you know, um, 242, you could probably go up 30 or 40 points from that. If everything works out well, right? Right. So, so yeah, I see the potential there, absolutely. Um, I like him more yeah. in Dynasty, Chappie, than I do 2019. Yeah. If I'm, and let's, let me answer it this way, Jack. If I'm playing for 2019 and 2019, I'm in a redraft league, I'm not as big on Arcia. If I'm in a Dynasty league, I'm trying to make that comp. And and thanks, Chappie. I mean, and I just look at where Cattell Marte was last year, and they're at age wise and experience wise. And I think RC is a little bit behind Marte experience wise, right. and that's why I'm trying to make the comp. Where might RC be down the road? And of course, Chappie uses the word potential. I'm using the word might. They mean the same thing in this discussion. But to answer your question, yeah, I like RC. So. There you go. A lot about nothing, but I finally got it out. I finally got a sentence finished. How about that? <laughs> but anyway, uh, Keston Hero led to that discussion. We got into Arcia. Um, so let me throw one at you. And what do you think about Quinn with the Phillies? Because here's the deal. All right. First of all, their manager loves to play Scott Kingery all over the field. We know that. The good news is, for me, being a Kingery owner, at least he plays him, right? But I think the manager loves to play him in different positions, and I still don't think he's in love with their third baseman. And so if you take him out of center field, voila, here comes Quinn, the mighty Quinn. And uh, you know what you're going to get with Quinn. You'll get a decent batting average. You can get a lot of steals. So plugging him in, not plugging I him mean, in. I mean, I, I... I like where your head's at with it. You know, he's, I tell you what he is. 
because he's, he's a stolen base um, possibility. And, of course, you, you know, you're you're always looking for that. He hasn't stolen many bases this year. Um, but, you know, he, he does bring some speed to the table. I know he's been injured. Um, he has some run power as well. Um, so it's an interesting – It's. I, 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 I'm a little bit befuddled by it because I, I you know, I, you do wonder what they're going to do there because they do have a sudden opportunity. So, you know, I mean, I was always under the impression of, of uh, Franco staying at third and Kingery playing center, but I think you're absolutely right when you say it like that. <laughs> you know, one of Kingery's best assets, and I listened, you know, I was listening the other day, they are talking about, you know, one of his best assets is his versatility. You know, he's not a natural center fielder, but he's got good work ethic, and he likes to, you know, uh, hone his craft. So he's going to work and get better at it. Um, that being said, I think I just lost Chappy. So we're talking about Quinn for the Phillies, and talking about Kingery. Let me see if I can get Chappy back because I'm not sure what happened, but it sounded like he went out on me. So if we can get Chappy back on the phone, we'll be talking with him just shortly. But Kingery, that is his key. I mean, Kingery is all over the field, and this year, Chappy, you with me? Hold on. We're back. You went out for some reason. It's had this real loud screeching sound, and then I just went on talking about Scott Kingery. So we're still on Kingery, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, I mean, yeah, Kingery's been on fire, so you got to love He's got to stay in the lineup, but, um, you know, Putting him somewhere else and letting Quinn play, I, I think if if he can show a little bit of momentum, um, I think that that's certainly something that that, that w- they would be interested in doing. So um, they could definitely use the production in, in that center field spot with uh, with catcher being out. So see, I hit you off guard with Quinn. I know you didn't think I was going there, did you? With a stash, <laughs> I got some more, but it's your turn. And you know, we got about time for about two or three more here, and then Sounds our great. our time will be up. But uh, give me another stash. I got one for you. Okay. How about J.D. Davis? Oh, you love the Mets. Come on. <laughs> you, lo- you love Astros who become Mets. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, so it's interesting. You start doing doing this research, and you just run across things, right? So, so his numbers aren't great. I mean, they're serviceable. He's hitting 276, eight homers, 22 RBIs, right? But, but the thing that stuck out with me um, – it is so he has a forty seven percent hard hit rate and a ten percent barrel rate. So those are both well above league average. Um, I, you know that shows me that, that he's really um, squaring the ball up, right? He, he, he's um, he, he's very precise in his approach. Okay, um, and and the other thing that, that has been impressive about Davis is his K rate has gone from you know as high as twenty nine point four to nineteen point four this year. So another signal that he's got an improved approach. Okay, now the down part of that is is he's got a lot of competition, right? Um, Nemo, McNeil, Conforto, Dom Smith, Carlos Gomez. That's only to name a few. But if he keeps hitting the ball hard and he keeps producing. The cream's going to rise to the top. This guy's going to get his opportunities. So this is one of these guys who he really starts to get hot. Um, it might be wor- it might be new of you to go ahead and take a chance on him now and see what happens over the next couple of weeks. So um, what are your thoughts on J.D. Davis, Art? Well, I, I, I like it. The thing, I, the thing I don't like, I'll tell you what I like about him. I think he can play the position, and I think he's going to get the opportunity, or he should get the opportunity, Okay. I think he's got a good power bat. The problem I got with him, who knows what in the world the Mets are going to do. Yeah. I mean, come on. You, oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm getting a headache thinking about Todd Frazier. Okay? I just I just, I lose control sometimes. I mean, what, what in the world? What's Todd Frazier still got in the tank? Yeah, anybody can play well for a couple of weeks. But what the Mets do, he comes and plays well for a couple of weeks. Oh, he's our boy again. I mean, you know, I know he's going to hit 220, 218, 212, something like that. That's who Todd Frazier is. All the while, you got JD Davis who could hit 270, 275, sitting on the bench doing nothing. That's what concerns me. No, you're absolutely right. But, I mean, here, here's the thing there's a lot of pressure on the Mets to win. So, what, when, when JD Davis proves his worth, which is, it sounds like we both agree this. Inevitable that he's 
he's going to be one of the better players in this group. Um, you have to play him because there's pressure on those guys to win. But they're you know, are they, they brought this GM, this Van, Van Wagen, it in because he was of the mindset that we're going to win now, right? So they're not winning now. Let's figure it out. Let's get this kid a chance. But are they going to win this year? I mean, you looked. You went through no. the standings at seven. I went through the no. standings at seven. You know, if anything, the Mets are falling deeper. Okay, not only that, now Cindergaard's out. Who knows how long? Okay, you know that pitching staff is a train wreck, and it's an injury looking a place to happen. That's just the way the Mets are. And then you got a kid like Dominique Smith who can hit three twenty, but you don't play him. You got Cano who can hit two ten. You let him start. I mean. Right. It, it's just a mess. It is a hot mess in Flushing, and I see them finishing fourth in that division. I really yeah, do. I, mean, I don't really disagree with any of that. I mean, but but the fact of the matter is, is you know, um, I really do think that at, at, at a point here in the very near future, this kid's going to be in the lineup. Do you think? I, I, do you think the Mets are a mindset? I, I, I'm being serious. You know, you go. Absolutely. I remember, I don't know if you remember this story, but, you know, Kirk Gibson, he's a free agent in 1988. I'm a a little bit older than you, Chappie, but I I love this story. Kirk Gibson had played with the Detroit Tigers. He'd won a World Series. The Dodgers signed him in 1980 in the offseason after 87. The Dodgers were a fourth-place team in 1987. They didn't know how to win, okay? They didn't know how to win. That 81 team, Garvey, Say, Russell, Lopes, they'd all graduated and gone on. And now you're left with a different group of players, and they didn't know how to win. And and Gibson comes into spring training, and it's obvious they don't know how to win. So he basically calls them on the carpet, you know, I'm sure cusses a whole lot, and gets their attention. And that year, guess what? The Dodgers win. The Mets don't know how to win. And the I don't know what they have to do, but the mentality in Flushing has got to be of a mindset change. And maybe a J.D. Davis who's played in Houston, you get me? Who yeah. knows how? Who's been around winning players? Maybe that could be infectious, and that's another reason. Not only his talent, but he brings a certain element of winning that the Mets just don't have. I mean, I haven't counted it, but short of Robbie Cano in two thousand nine, and that was ten years ago. How many Mets on the current team have a World Series ring? I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to yeah. bet no one other than Cano. There may be others. I don't know of them. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> my rant goes on. No, it's yeah. I, I'll tell you. I mean, it's just it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, these guys, like you said, Dom Smith's another good example. You get him in the lineup. Yeah, you know, however you have to do it, right? Um, sorry, I'm a little distracted here. Did you see Max Scherzer bunted a ball off his mo- nose in batting practice? I saw where he got hit with a ball. I didn't know it hit him in the nose. He was taking. He was bunting. I just saw it. And it deflected. I mean, he was like real lackadaisical about it and it came up and hit him right in the face. Uh, I don't know. I think they said his, his status is up in the air. Uh, oh, my God. But, Just yeah. what the Nationals need, too, right? You know? <laughs> of course, I've been saying with the Nats, they're, they're, a yeah. July, they're a July 4th team. And let's see where they are on July 4th. And that's getting closer and closer. We're now like, what, 14, 16 days away from July 4th. Yeah. If the Nats aren't any closer July 4th than they are today, uh, Wholesale changes in in Washington. That's my take. And and Mad Max, this is not our our show tonight. Because we're talking about stashers, and you're certainly not going to consider him a stasher. But but do they trade Mad Max? And oh boy, don't you know New York Yankees? They're ready. Yeah, I mean it, it would make sense. That's for sure. If you're not going to contend, you could definitely get a lot for them. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Chappie, guess what? What you need dinner. I need to quit talking. <laughs> And it's been a great night once again. Yeah, man, I always love it. Um, you know, it's funny because uh, we you, you prepare all this stuff, and you always worry about not having enough. And then um, I still have too much. So. I think we could talk. I think this show could go on until eleven o'clock tonight with no problem if we chose yeah, to do it. Just, and yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, a lot of that's you, and I appreciate your preparedness and. Uh, just uh, and I and I want to thank the guys that are still in the chat room. My chat room says there are nine in the chat room that are live right now. Let's see who we got. We got if this is true, we've got Lou, we got Andrea. I'm showing Cha Cha is still with us. Doug Boyle, who is DVDAK?